Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Northern Spotlights, the talk show that takes us north with the Vancouver Aquarium. I'm your host, Keely, and joining me today is Mackenzie. She's a senior biologist and diver here at the Vancouver Aquarium. She has over 800 lifetime dives, and she's been with six skilled sharks. She's been diving in the Arctic. She has been deeper than 300 feet in a submarine. This all sounds very impressive, Mackenzie, but yet I happen to know this wasn't always what you thought you might do. I heard that you started off considering life as a ballet dancer. I did. You did. So what made you ultimately choose to become a biologist here at the Vancouver Aquarium? Well, I started diving at a really young age, and I fell in love with waters and the ocean, and so I changed my mind and decided I wanted to be a marine biologist, and then I started working as a volunteer at the Vancouver Aquarium, and I've been here ever since. All right, so yeah, that is 16 years you've been here at the aquarium. You've done a fair amount of diving, and again, some of it has been up in the Arctic. So how many times have you been up there? I've been fortunate enough to go twice now to the Arctic. Last summer was my first trip there, and then I was fortunate enough to go again this summer, and it's very exciting. All right, I imagine it would be rather exciting. What brought you up there in the first place? Well, we've relocated um, some of our diving from Resolute Bay, and this year and last year we went to Cambridge Bay, and so we started diving in a new location, and this year we were doing some nearshore ecological surveys. So we were doing taxonomic surveys of what animals were present and how many animals were in each dive site. So identifying the different animals and figuring That's out right. where they hang out. Yes. Has a lot of work been done on this before? Not a lot of work. Uh, the Arctic is very much unexplored. Even mm-hmm. just trying to figure out where we're going diving is a challenge uh, because the charts are not very detailed. So logistically, diving in the Arctic is very complicated. All right. So yeah, there's not exactly a guidebook or anything. So how did you and your team figure out where to go and what to look for? Well, we use some of the same principles that we do when we're diving here. We, okay. we look at different dive spots where maybe there's rocks coming up or where we know there's good current. So we can kind of imagine what animals might live in those habitats. So we applied the same thing to the Arctic, mm-hmm. although the charts aren't very detailed, so it was much more difficult to do. We did hire a local guide, which was invaluable, because he was able to tell us where they've seen certain animals come up when they've been fishing. He's also been able to tell us where the ice doesn't freeze all the way down, which is very important up there, because in the winter, the ice freezes. It comes ashore and doesn't allow anything to settle in the first 10 or 20 feet. So it was very helpful to have local knowledge. All right, yeah, absolutely. So what sort of animals did you come across? Did it look fairly similar to here, the kind of dives you're used to in British Columbia? Some of the animals are similar, but they're just that slight bit different. So it's super challenging to try and figure out if they're the same species, if they're different species. I uh, did find some similar animals and then some completely ones too. Yeah, we actually have a photo of uh, some of the, of a look at, I believe it's Cambridge Bay. Yes. And looking at this photo before, I got to say, it did look fairly similar to British Columbia to me. This was our first dive, our very first spot that we jumped in and we were amazed at how much life, because really I had never been there. I had no expectations of what right. I was going to find. And we found this beautiful wall with all this life on it. And I was simply amazed. And you, you mentioned that it's kind of similar but a little bit different. I, to me, they, they look the, kind of the same. So what, what, can you give us an example of an animal that you came across that was similar but different? Well, there's lots of, uh, lots of similarities and difference. Some of the sea stars that we brought back look very similar yet slightly different. Uh, a couple of the jellyfish species that we've been looking at are slightly different. Um, and it's one of those really challenging things as we're trying to identify these animals, trying to find anyone who knows about Arctic animals, since there is no guidebook made for the Arctic, we're trying to piece together what species are, are which. So has it been exciting to, for you to take a, look at, a closer look at some of these animals and sort of sure. discover them? Definitely. So I hear that you collected a rather interesting jelly last year. We did. Well, one of our jobs while we were up there was to fill our scoop tanks. Um, and so while we were doing that, we were spending some time walking along the shore. Mm-hmm. And we just happened to find some jellyfish of Phyra, which are little tiny baby jellies. And so we brought eight of them back to the aquarium with us and grew them up. Uh. And it turns out to be a lion's mane, but we had no idea what species it was. So we uh-huh. happened to be doing some genetic work on our local species of lion's mane. And so we gave a sample to the researcher to test. And the results came back as it's dissimilar to our local species. And it's dissimilar to other species that have been 
identified. So we really don't know what species it is. It could be a new species, but we're not entirely sure what to do with that information because there are no experts on animals up there, so it's pretty exciting. I imagine, because yeah, up north it's a bit of a combination of the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, so could it be a Pacific Atlantic lion's mane jelly? And that's the part we don't know. Cambridge Bay is almost right in the middle between the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, so you get distribution of animals coming both directions, and so, and people aren't even sure where the animals, what they're final distribution is, or the extent of dis distribution, so mm -hmm. it just adds, makes it that much more complicated. Okay, that, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> but of course, just trying to describe and better understand this species, uh, it's probably fairly important to have uh, an understanding of its life cycle, and I know that you're fairly well known in circles for growing, having an incredible diversity of animals and being very successful in growing them up and breeding them. Have you, in fact, been able to do this with any of your any of the Arctic jellies you guys came across? We have that one species of lion's mane that we brought back. We were able to grow up and actually have been able to reproduce it in the aquarium. So we're on our second generation right now, and we're growing yes. it up. And it will be super helpful when we're trying to identify this animal down to species, if possible, because now we have pictures of all the different life stages. And it turns out that it looks very similar to our local jelly and their life cycle, but it is different. That's, that's pretty impressive. And so you were able to find a male and a female of this different kind of lion's mane? Well, out of the eight animals that we brought back, we had two that grew up to adulthood. And it just luck so happens that we had one male and one female, and we were able to produce baby jellies from those two. Well done. Look at you go. <laughs> uh, now, I imagine trying to find those animals in the first place would be a, a little bit tough. Uh, the waters, I know the waters here off the coast of British Columbia are, are kind of chilly. Uh, and in fact, we have a question from the audience. Grace from Edmonton is wondering, how cold is the water in the Arctic anyways? That's a really good question. We were wearing data loggers on our mm -hmm. dive equipment, and it turns out that we were diving in waters at depth at minus 1.4 degrees Celsius. <laughs> yes, that sounds, it was that really sounds cold. pretty It sounds pretty chilly. So now the question I have for those of you in our audience today, how many of you think you'd go swimming or diving in water of around minus 1.4 degrees Celsius? <laughs> Grace is, Grace is saying no, no. <laughs> and she's from Edmonton. All right, yeah, it definitely, I think, takes a brave soul to be able to head into those sorts of waters. Uh, and how, what, at what temperature does that water freeze at anyways? Uh, Seawater freezes at minus 1.8. Nice and close to freezing so it's temperatures. Pretty darn cold. Yeah, I imagine there's some additional logistical challenges with that. It is. It's definitely challenging diving in that cold because your hands get cold, your face gets, everything gets cold basically. Mm -hmm. So we do have modifications to our dive gear. We use special regulators that are adapted mm -hmm. for Arctic waters. Even though we did have problems with our regulators freezing because it was so cold, uh, we use three fingered gloves to help keep our fingers yeah. warm and we wear multiple layers. This year, we were lucky enough, we had heated jackets underneath our dry suits, Ooh. which was very nice. Kept oh, us a little handy. toastier. Nice. That must have been pretty good. Uh, and I imagine it'll come in handy for any sort of future trips you might uh, do to the Arctic. I'm sure there's some, something that you wish you could see yet. Is there anything in particular you're kind of hoping for when there's you head up again? Uh, definitely. And of course, it's a jellyfish, because I love jellies. Uh, there is a species of jellyfish that I would love to find up there. It's very similar to the Japanese sea nettle that we have here at the aquarium. Okay. But this other species, I believe the common name is a northern sea nettle, mm -hmm. but it is virtually unseen in aquariums anywhere in the world, and I would certainly love to find it next trip up. Okay, because, yeah, looking, looking at those photos, they, they do look fairly... Similar. They do. The one on the left is the Japanese sea nettle that we have here at the aquarium. Okay. And the one on the right is the one that I would really like to find. And it would be. Mostly because it's cool. so different and rare? Or it's what's different exciting about it? <laughs> well, very few people have worked with that animal. Oh, okay. I'm always looking out for new jellyfish species to work with. So. All right. How many jelly species have you worked with? At the aquarium, we have about 35 different species of jellies that we can culture at the moment, and we've yeah. displayed well over 40. All right. 
That sounds pretty impressive, and uh, I hope you get to see some more Arctic jellies in the future. Uh, so the next trip up to the aquarium, what will your team, or rather up to the Arctic, what, what will the aquarium team be doing and looking for? Well, we're hoping that we're going back again next year, and we would like to keep working on our nearshore ecological surveys, okay. um, because it's hard to tell what kind of changes are happening in the Arctic when there's no baseline for the animals that live underneath the ice. And there's been very little research done on what is there right now, so we would like to go back. We've got some new areas that we would like to look at and definitely new dive spots that we're hoping yeah. to get to. So we'd like to just keep adding to that information, and then that information we can share with researchers or other people who are studying animals in the Arctic, and hopefully that information will help them in their studies. That sounds pretty exciting that you could be on the front line of creating Arctic baselines and finding some of those impressive Arctic animals. So I look forward to hearing more about it, and there's definitely more information on our website. Uh, in fact, if any of you out there would like to learn more about what the Vancouver Aquarium is doing, uh, you can check out our website, vanacqua.org slash Our North. There's lots of great information up there. There's even been some uh, blog posts on some of the trips and work that they, diving trips that they've done. Uh, so definitely check that out. And if you would like to learn more about what the aquarium does in the Arctic, you can feel free to tune in for our next Northern Spotlights program it will be tomorrow, and we'll be visiting in with Eric Solomon, who is the director of our Arctic programs and has helped make some of the connections, I believe, for your team. So it'll definitely be interesting to hear from him. Tune in again at 12.30 Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. So thanks once again, everyone, for joining us for Northern Spotlights. Again, I'm Keely. Thanks so much, Mackenzie, for joining us here this afternoon. Thank you. And for have a fantastic rest of your day.